Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain TV. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa met with British Prime Minister Theresa May to discuss bilateral relations and ways of further developing them. They also discussed a number of regional and international issues of interest to both sides. His Majesty expressed the pride of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the close historical relations bonding the two countries, dating back over 200 years and continuously developing. He reaffirmed the need for strengthening mutual cooperation, pushing further high-level joint ventures and seizing all available opportunities to further bolster the existing strong relations to the benefit of both countries. His Majesty pointed out that further interaction, including continued consultation and more frequent visits of experts and representatives of government and civil societies, would broaden future prospects and uh, contribute to the development and welfare of both countries. He went on to say that he was looking forward to enhancing economic cooperation between the UK and Bahrain, as well as with the GCC countries in general, stressing that numerous promising economic opportunities for close Closer cooperation and coordination exists. He commended the supportive stance of the United Kingdom in backing security and stability in Bahrain. He noted that it reflects the strong relationship between the two countries and indicates the firm desire to further boost ties. His Majesty then expressed appreciation for the important strategic role of the UK in contributing to regional and global security and stability. During the talks, His Majesty the King highlighted Bahrain's important strides in empowering women to assume their role as essential partners in economic and social development, particularly in the field of education and private and government sectors. For her part, the British Prime Minister welcomed His Majesty the King, reaffirming the depth of the relations linking the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom, expressing encouragement for the reform efforts that being made. The Prime Minister thanked His Majesty the King for the invitation to visit Bahrain on the occasion of the celebration of the 200th year anniversary of Bahrain-UK relations and during the GCC summit in December. The Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain announced that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a delegation of members of the Bahrain All Party Parliament Group, the APPG, and Conservative Middle East Council, the CMEC, at his residence in London today and discussed relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom and highlighted the opportunities to develop a long standing friendship further. His Majesty King Hamad welcomed the delegation and noted that the United Kingdom has been a friend and ally of Bahrain for over 200 years. His Majesty discussed some vital issues affecting the two nations with the distinguished parliamentarians, adding that, the bah that Bahrain will continue to be a loyal friend to the UK, including hosting the largest Royal Navy facility outside of the UK. At the conclusion of the meeting, His Majesty the King welcomed the new members of the parliamentary group and the announcement of its uh, renaming to the All Party Parliamentary Group for Friends of Bahrain, which reflects the long standing friendship and relationship between the two nations and their people, and also wished them success. Chairman of the Bahrain APPG, uh, Connor Burns MP, noted that Bahrain has been Britain's ally for more than 200 years, adding that the ties that uh, have developed since then led to Bahrain being one of Britain's most dependable friends in the Middle East. Chairman of the Bahrain APPG stated that Bahrain has evolved into the most liberal and progressive society in the Arab world, noting that it has led the way on women's rights, freedom of worship and creating a tolerant, diverse community. He expressed delight in meeting His Majesty the King, highlighted Bahraini-British strong historic relationships. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and Head of the Commonwealth received yesterday His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in Buckingham Palace. The meeting reviewed the solid historic relations linking the two friendly countries which are based on cooperation and mutual respect. His Majesty the King lauded the vital role played by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in enhancing these bilateral ties. The two sides also discussed joint efforts in developing relations between Bahrain and the United Kingdom in all fields in addition to exchanging views on a number of issues of mutual concern. His Majesty the King arrived yesterday in the British capital London and was received by the members of the Conservative Party at the House of Lords and representative of Buckingham Palace, Mr. James Yonker, and Bahrain's ambassador to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. 
Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa received today the chairman of the Royal University for Women, the RUW Board of Trustees, Fahad Abdullah Al Zamil, who presented to the Deputy Prime Minister the chairman of West Virginia University's Board of Directors, Thomas Flaherty, and President Dr. Gordon Gee. The Deputy Prime Minister welcomed WVU's delegation, praising the cooperation between the two universities on academic research and the exchange of expertise to avail from WVU's high-quality education to boost Bahrain's efforts in developing higher education. For the first time in its history, WVU will provide its academic programs outside the United States to RUW starting 2017, which will cover engineering, energy, and environmental courses under a strategic partnership between both universities. The Ministry of Interior completed all preparations regarding the required arrangement for conducting the Gulf Cooperation Council joint security exercise, which is carried out for the first time according to the directives of the GCC leaders and interior ministers to enhance security cooperation. The GCC joint security exercise will enhance joint capacity, especially for combating terrorism. The exercise reflects the high readiness of the security forces and the mutual desire of exchanging experiences and joint exercises. It is also considered a significant leap in the process of security cooperation between the GCC countries and unifying the concepts of security work. The exercise aims to enhance the readiness of security forces to upgrade the field coordination and the effectiveness of the commanding procedures and communication between security operation centers regarding the immediate exchange of information as well as to implement security measures to respond to various security conditions. Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf, inaugurated a new exit from Bisaitin to Sheikh Isa bin Salman Causeway as a part of the second phase of the Paving of Roads project in Block 226 and 228 in Bisaitin. The Minister of Works stated that the exit aims to alleviate traffic congestion in the area and create an easy exit from Bisaitin to Manama. He noted that the reconstruction works have developed significantly in order to cope with the traffic in the area, which has increased due to the rise of investment projects and shops. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, has inaugurated today the BBTC Middle East and Africa Conference organized by Euro Petroleum Consultants Limited and Bahrain Petroleum Company, BAPCO, in cooperation with the National Oil and Gas Authority. The conference was attended by a number of experts, engineers, and those interested in the aspects of the oil industry. The Minister of Oil noted the organizing company's choice of appointing Bahrain to hold this global event enhances the status of the Kingdom as an important center in the region to hold specialized events, as well as the positive role of the Bahraini government and the facilities it offers in strengthening the economic movement and conference tourism. He also explained that the decline in global crude prices at the end of 2015 posed a challenge in dealing with the oil industry with a more flexible strategy. The minister affirmed that the kingdom sought to increase the production capacity of the refinery and incorporate the latest technologies to enhance quality and competitiveness. 
Ukraine's defense force have carried out today the final stage of the joint naval drill on Causeway 17 with the participation of the Royal Bahrain Naval Force, the RBNF, and the Eastern Fleet of the Royal Saudi Navy. The drill included the use of a number of combat vessels, a patrol crafts, a flight wing of helicopters, and several, several militant groups. The aim of these exercises is to achieve the highest level of coordination, cooperation, and integration in the field of maritime, as well as the exchange of military expertise and other elements of common interest in order to execute a unified military action. This exercise uh, comes as part of the military causeway training maneuvers which are carried out periodically between the neighboring countries and categorized in the highest level of regard considering the magnitude of the participating combat forces advanced equipment. The Bahrain All Shares Index closed 1.41 points up today at 1,144.89 points. Trading increased across the investment, services and commercial banking sectors, with the latter representing the majority 65% of total share value traded. In grand total today, there were 24 equity transactions made up of 303,987 shares worth 49,111 Bahraini dinars. Meanwhile, the board of the Bahrain Bourse, BHB, has approved fees for the Bahrain investment market, which is being launched to help SMEs that do not meet the listing requirements of the main market to get financing. The minimum paid-up capital required is 250,000 dinars, and the listing application will be handled by BHB within 30 days. Bahrain's non-oil sector grew by 3.6% in the second quarter of 2016, a marked acceleration from 2.7% in the first three months of the year, according to the latest Bahrain Economic Quarterly Report, released by the Economic Development Board. The resilience of the non-oil sector, which accounts for more than 80% of GDP, has been underpinned by ongoing infrastructure projects, including nearly $4 billion worth of active projects financed by the GCC Development Fund, more than tripling in less than a year. The fastest growing individual sector for the period was social and personal services, a category dominated by private education and healthcare, which grew by an annual rate of 9.9% in Q2. Financial services saw real growth of 4%, while manufacturing expanded by 3.3%. Private sector growth was also supported by growth in bank credit, with the average annual rate of credit growth during the first half of the year reaching 7.2% and the cost of credit declining slightly. The chairman of the Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, the TRA, Dr. Mohammed Al Amr, said on the sidelines of the Arab ICT Forum 2016 that Bahrain's plan to offer a 5G network by 2019 is on track. According to statistics published by the TRA, there were about 2.04 million broadband subscriptions by the end of Q2 this year, a 2% increase compared with Q4 2015. Broadband penetration reached 145%, driven by mobile broadband subscriptions, which represented 92% of total broadband subscriptions by the end of Q2 2016. Meanwhile, mobile service closed Q2 with 2.8 million subscriptions, growing by 11% compared with end 2015. Mobile penetration reached 201%, with prepaid mobile subscriptions representing 80% of the market, and the number of fixed telephony subscriptions decreased by 4% compared with end 2015. Bahrain's national carrier, Gulf Air, has signed a ground handling services contract with Swissport Saudi Arabia, a subsidiary of Swissport International, the world's leading provider of ground and air cargo services to the aviation industry. The agreement will see Swissport Saudi Arabia provide ground handling services for Gulf Air's Saudi operations at King Khalid International Airport in Riyadh, King Abdulaziz International Airport in Jeddah, and King Fahad International Airport in Damam. The agreement includes comprehensive ground handling services, such as passenger and ramp handling, baggage services, operations coordination and load control. Gulf Air operates 90 weekly flights to five destinations in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, with schedule enhancements during peak seasons.